guys, what's going on? Welcome to Serial at Midnight. My name is Heath, and this is my Magic City Con 2019 convention report. Magic City Con takes place every year in Birmingham, Alabama, and it's a regional show. It's a local show. It's not one of those corporate sponsored chain conventions. It's one of those independently, uh, it's an organic convention. It grows every single year organically. You know what I'm talking about, like the wizard cons. There's nothing wrong with these chain conventions. They're becoming more and more prevalent, but uh, I feel like the focus of those cons is like limited edition merchandise, the celebrity meet and greet stuff. This felt like it was about the fans and every year Magic City Con continues to grow, I think because of that, because it really feels like it's for the fans, by the fans. Uh, and as I was wandering the exhibit hall, I was talking to some of these people. I was like, how's your convention going? Everybody was having a blast. The sense of community was strong. Um, and it, I think it's growing. Like I was saying, I think this is the biggest year that it's ever had. Uh, the exhibit hall was huge. It was packed. There were tons of people at this convention. Um, I like to go to these things to experience the, you know, I like to do shopping. I like to hit up the comic booths. I was so happy to see that comics were well represented at this show. There were local comic creators. There were some comic vendors. I think there were three separate comic vendor booths that were selling dollar comics, half price trade paperbacks, and of course, of course, I partook of the deals. So I'll show you guys some of the stuff that I bought after this uh, coming up. I also supported local artists. There were a lot of regional artists uh, doing prints and art and some cool crafts and things like that. My daughter got a henna, uh, you know, like a henna tattoo on her hand that she was super excited about. It looked great. I'll throw a picture of it up here. Um, but one of the cool things about the show is that I feel like the celebrity list gets better every time. And so we have the usual voice actors and we have some of the, you know, the character actors and things like that. I like the wrestlers. Um, this year, Dustin Rhodes, AKA Gold Dust, formerly of the WWE, was at the show, and Al Snow, also formerly of WWE. You know, uh, Dustin Rhodes just had a huge match at All Elite Wrestling's event uh, with his brother Cody. They they put on a, uh, a, a tear down the house kind of a match. And so they did a panel. Al Snow and Dustin Rhodes had a, a panel. And it was a small room. And listen, this is, what I'm, this is what I'm talking about, you guys. With these smaller regional conventions, it's intimate. It's about you, the fans. It's about the people that you're there to see. It's just the, it, like mutual appreciation, you know? And so I'm like, I sat on the front row of this panel. I'm literally like five feet from Dustin Rhodes and from Al Snow. There, everybody had a microphone, but they didn't necessarily need one because we were all so close enough. We're just, you know, everybody's just kind of shooting questions off, talking, lots of eye contact. It was not one of those things where it's like, hello, 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 hello. thank you for coming, coming, coming. It was very intimate and that was awesome. Uh, another one of my goals for this convention was to do a lot of cosplay photography and I let myself down there because I just didn't get to do as much of it as I wanted to. I did get to meet some of these regional cosplayers. They were doing great work. Uh, a lot of customized homemade stuff as cosplayers do. They were just so passionate. Uh, but I didn't get to do as much of it as I wanted to. There was just so much going on uh, between the, the dealer booth, the panels, the meet and greets, all that stuff. Uh, this would, Listen guys, this was a great con. If you're in the Southeast region, a lot of these exhibitors, a lot of the talents, they're in the Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, Florida, all that area, the Southeast region, um, make it to this con. If, if making it to this con next year is an option for you, I highly recommend it. It's a sweet show. It's a fantastic show. So now I want to talk about some of the stuff that I picked up. First and foremost, I mentioned comic book shopping. I did definitely do some comic book shopping. Uh, I bought, so here's about 50 comics and I don't know that I'm going to go through it in this video. I may do a separate video where I go through all the comics. Uh, but it was a, it was a dollar per comic or like the more you bought, the bigger of a discount you got. So I think it was like, uh, if you bought six, it went down, but by the time you get to 10, you're looking at $5. So I was like, oh, I can do that. So I got 50 comics. As I'm going through there, I bought a lot of Avengers, like 80s Avengers comics. Uh, so I'm going through there. I was like, oh, that's that's cool. They have that old Avengers issue. Oh, there's the next issue. Oh, and there's the issue before that. And then I'm looking, I'm realizing I'm putting together runs of Avengers, like, you know, like consecutive runs, uh, little chunks of Avengers continuity. So I, I just like, I was in heaven. Um, and then uh, there's, I, I'll save it for the haul video, like the, the comic video that I do, like a comic pickup video. But there was a Larry Hama series that 
I don't think a whole lot of people were super behind. Larry Hamov is, of course, the writer, the historic writer for G.I. Joe, uh, wrote, you know, still writing G.I. Joe, hundreds of issues of G.I. Joe. And uh, he had a book that was kind of a passion project. It ran for 16 issues, and I picked up the entire series at the booth. This one, <laughs> this one back issue bin with the, the 50 cent comics. I got the whole run. I got the entire thing for eight bucks. 16 issues, 50 cents, eight bucks. So, we will go through those one by one in a future video, but let's, let me talk about some of the artists that I that I got to see there. So this is this is a, a canvas print of uh, obviously this is Slave Leia choking out Jabba the Hutt historically that that fantastic scene from Return of the Jedi. This is from an artist called Brian Fields. It's Brian Fields art. He was there with his son. Uh, they cut me a deal on this canvas. I I really liked this. I was like, do you have that in a print? Because they had a huge uh, file folder thing full of their prints. And I was like, do you have that in a print? And they're like, no, it's canvas only. But I tell you what, we'll sell you the canvas print for this. The price is just the paper print. And I was like, really? So I got this uh, for $10, believe it or not. This this nice canvas print for $10. I love it. I love Slave Leia. I love Leia in general. Rest in peace, Carrie Fisher. I'm so sad that she's gone. Um, but this was a really, really fantastic uh, piece of art that I had to have. There was a... There was an artist there who, uh, it was Scott Rory artist, and they gave me permission to film their booth so that I could show it to you guys. I'm talking about like every pop culture thing that we love as geeks, uh, the Universal Monsters, classic monsters, 60s stuff, Batman, Indiana Jones, Star Wars, cartoons, everything was represented. This guy does all these, he, he, he does prints of all of this stuff. But he makes custom coasters out of them, and I thought that was a really cool thing. These these custom coaster. He has an Etsy store, uh, but they they had uh, a bunch of stuff that I wanted, and I had to kind of limit myself. So I ended up only grabbing two. But they're going to be at Atlanta Comic Con in a few weeks. They are they are from the Atlanta area, and uh, they're going to be at Atlanta Comic Con. I'm going to be at Atlanta Comic Con covering that show, and I got to pick up a few more coasters. But I did pick up. This one with all of the cat women, the cat womans, <laughs> however you want to say it, from the 60s, uh, the 60s, the Adam West Batman series. So, of course, this is the iconic cat women. Julie Newmar is my favorite, in case you're interested, in case you're curious. I, my dedication lies with Julie Newmar. Uh, but I got one more. Uh, it's classic. It's horror. If you guys know the channel, if you know me, you probably know what I had to get. I got Vincent Price. Vinny P, you guys, is this not the sharpest, man? This is, every time I set my drink on this coaster, I get to look at Vincent Price and admire him. Just, <laughs> I was so excited. I was like, Vincent Price! By the way, I got to see Jeffrey Gwynn. You guys know the Thundercats print that I have in the background of my videos. Uh, I've added it to the, the movie studio upstairs where I have all my v, my, uh, my DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, there's a Thundercats print that I've hung there. It's from an artist named Jeffrey Gwynn, and I got to see him again at, at this show. Got to see him again and talk to him a little bit. Uh, I love his work. I love his Thundercat stuff, so it was great to see him again. Um, if you guys want to check out Jeffrey Gwynn, here's the, here's the information for him as well. But uh, last but certainly not least, this is actually... Uh, a huge piece. That's why I saved it for last because it's big. Um, this is from an artist named Haven Tubbs and it's mixed media. They take, she takes like photography or like the, these images. I don't know that it's photography, but it, she takes these images, comic book art, pulp art, and she, she mixes it with these painted psychedelic backgrounds. Listen, I'm not going to bury it anymore. It's, I grabbed this. Uh, is this not the coolest? So this is my era of X-Men. Um, this is a, a villain's gallery. I can't remember what this is from. Uh, I want to say this is from a backup of... Is it X-Men number one? I don't even remember. This is from the back of a comic... This is from a comic book. Uh, they've taken it, the artist has taken it, and they've, they've mixed it with this incredible, colorful, psychedelic background. Uh, this is solid wood. This is ready to be hung on the wall. I saw it. I had to have it because like I said, this is my era of X-Men. I love the X-Men. I came to the X-Men in the early 90s, the Jim Lee stuff. I love that. I also love these villains, you guys. Just just at a glance, hopefully you can see this. We've got, we've got Sabretooth, we've got Toad, Juggernaut, Emma Frost, Sebastian Shaw, a Sentinel, Loki. Is that Phoenix up there? We've got Mojo, Mystique, uh, Mr. Sinister, Magneto, Apocalypse. 
it's incredible. This is representing so many cool X-Men villains. I wish it was like an X-Men hero piece as a companion. Maybe I'll have to track them down at another show and see if they can whip something like that up for me or if they have something like that. But you guys, I had a great convention. This is some super cool geeky stuff. Uh, again, if you get a chance to check out Magic City Con, I highly recommend it. It's a very cool convention. Lots of passion, lots of local artists. Like I said, it's kind of for the fans, by the fans. This feels like a fan run event, not a big money corporate event. And that's, it, listen, again, not that there's anything wrong with those. We're gonna be covering those as well, but there's just something special about these homegrown conventions that I love so much. So guys, thanks for hanging out, talking about Magic City Con with me. I appreciate you so very much. So take care, and until next time, I will catch you later.